Dixon Munene, his name is not new nor is his face. He graced the Kenyan media back in 2009 for being involved in what men termed as the most high profile murder case in Kenya in the recent years. The killing of the former Gatundu MP son, Patrick Mirori. At the age of 24 years, Dixon Munene had many in his line of work and best of him. He was the youngest inspector of police in Kenya. A job he says was inspired by a mugging that happened as he boarded a matatu in the Eastlands area. Working in the police force for some time, from 202 up to 29, I was an inspector of police. I used to work at uh, Kiliman Police Station and uh, I was in charge of Capital Hill Police Post. Uh, then in my line of duty, an unfortunate incident happened and uh, someone died in the line of my duty. But the incident of 2009, which involved Dixon Munene and Francis Chapkonga, instantly changed the dreams of a young aspiring inspector of police as he was sentenced to death and later lifetime imprisonment in the most guarded prison in Kenya, Kamiti Prison. I was convicted to by uh, Honorable Justice Wasan to, to suffer death. Okay? It has been a very difficult journey actually for me, for my family, for those people who know me, for everyone, even for the family that brought their, their loved one. It is almost a decade now. Munena has been in prison, serving a lifetime imprisonment. From a life of comfort, putting lawbreakers behind bars, to a life of 24 hour security. And worst of it all, being behind bars with those that he put in prison. An experience, he says, is heartbreaking. One of the biggest experiences is that uh, anybody can be anywhere. Never say never, right? Uh, for me, being a police officer and being in prison, and you know, having what's worked in Nairobi and having some of the people that I brought into prison, staying with them, for me, that has been a challenge. Being in prison is not an easy experience, Munene says. It is emotionally wrecking and boring as everything is done as per routine. But Munene chose another route to fight all the prison challenges, education. He has written an account of the event that changed his life from the behind the walls of Kamiti. Prison is about monotony. It's about, it's about, yeah, it's about following a, a routine. Yeah? Monday like Sunday, Sunday is like Tuesday, Tuesday is like Friday, you know, things are the same. The reality of seeing myself in prison, realizing that my dream has now, I don't have a dream anymore, so what can I do with that time? So I started writing, I did a lot of writing, I have done a lot of, I have a lot of materials. Uh, actually that's the reason why I took entrepreneurship course. They say the sky is the limit, and it has been for Munene. He has yet made history again. This time, as he became the first ever master's graduate in business administration degree behind bars, they saw him win the top committee prison inmates award, an outstanding overall award. <laughs> Munene, despite of his life now, has not despaired. He is constantly studying and he is now a second year law student in the University of London, where he studies criminal law through virtual learning. He has also completed a certified public account section 6, a move he proudly displays with his acquired certificates. Prison, I've tried to use it. I'm trying to use it the best way I know how. But I also want to find a way of how, like now the materials I've written, how they can go to the, the public. Like now the materials I, 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 I did for CICT. Focus number section five and six. They are the ones that are being used now outside there. 
Yeah. Any material you see related to CICT, they come from here. A master's degree behind bars, but not for Munene. He has not stopped there. He has made an application for him to further his master's. A PhD, which he has been granted. I don't want to do, I don't want to do my PhD. And that's what I'm focused on. Munene is full of thoughts. You might wonder, what wonders in his head? We talk briefly about what happened in his case. He has been in and out of courts and now in Supreme Court to appeal, but he has been unsuccessful. He has suspended any more court appearances because of the cost. Wasame did his work, although the judgment had a lot of errors and, you know, but he did his work and he finished. We went to Court of Appeal, they did their work. I have set my eyes on the Supreme Court and I'm sure once we deal with the issue of the Supreme Court, I'll get a good decision because the matters that, are, that need to be decided by the Supreme Court, the things that they are in law and they are backed by facts. And I know, because I know where the errors have been, in both the High Court and the Court of Appeal. So in the Supreme Court, those errors will be collected. Does he regret the events that led to his arrest and imprisonment? How does he feel about the whole process? And what would he have done differently? Has there been unfairness in handling his case? I regret many things. I regret very many things. I regret many things. But one thing I regret is about the incident that brought me here. That's that standard. Because it has caused agony to my family, to the family that lost their loved one, and to myself. Yeah? It's something I feel if I could do things differently, uh, then that one can, can, can change. But now, we must also now deal with the reality. Now, the reality is this we can't take back time. I ask him one more last thing whether there is anything that he wishes to say to anyone, to his family, and to those that were affected. Yeah, I pray for them very much. I pray for them every day. I pray for them. Uh, I pray for them for God to 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 help them, to to heal them, and also to know that God will give them happiness in many ways. In many ways. And I know one, one day, one time, it might maybe two years, ten years, twenty years to come, I have a chance to, to, to speak to them so that I can tell them how I feel. From riches to rags, from power to powerless, from full of freedom to behind bars, from command to being commanded, that is the life of Dixon Munene. One thing though hasn't changed is ambition his anger to acquire knowledge, to propel to higher heights. He brings hope to the hopeless and to the despaired, to his fellow prisoners and to those that need encouragement as he soars high up as an eagle. Prisoners survive by hope, so you must have hope. Yes. So if you lose hope in prison, then you have nothing left because you have nothing anyway. So you must have that hope. And all of us give through that hope. He hopes that the power of mercy will pardon him to go back to the community and to his family. Mariana Moli for Prison Diaries.